Let's move to the American and Conference USA. UTSA 31, Memphis 28. Memphis went up 21 to nothing in the first nine minutes of this ball game, and then were outscored 31 to seven in the uh, the remainder of the first quarter on. Like UTSA beat the brakes off these guys, just just whipped them. And now Mich- uh, Michigan, uh, Memphis did outgain them. UTSA had nine more first downs, 25 to 16. UTSA was nine out of 20 on third down. Memphis was only four of 12. Memphis could not run the football. Had 78 yards rushing. UTSA had 205 on 62 attempts. Sincere McCormick is a beast. He's just incredible. Frank Harris was able to throw the ball a little bit. 18 of 28 for 186 yards and one touchdown. Uh, But Sincere McCormick, 42 carries, 184 yards, three touchdowns in this game. This was, I mean, it was a last-minute field goal kind of game. Memphis was lucky to get that early lead, but on offense, Memphis only had the ball for 24 minutes in this game and did have two turnovers, and the last one was devastating. This was uh, this was rough, man. Uh, for, for Memphis fans, you felt like you had this one in the bag early, and the UTSA just kept clawing back, clawing back, clawing back. This is this is crazy. What did you think about this game as it was going on? All right, so first off, yesterday I did my live show on uh, 9 a.m. SBR, I I swapped my pick. I, I I took I took UTSA points. I took UTSA money line, and I took my prop play of the day was UTSA team total. You know what that team total was? Thirty. Thirty one and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, the fuck. That's that's the way it goes. But hey, you do get the you get you got the dog. I hit. got the I got the other two. I got the other two. I woke up yesterday morning, and you know what I thought when we and you did our show Thursday evening afternoon. I I came out Friday. I said I thought the magic in Memphis was going to keep rolling, and I woke up yesterday just like with the Notre Dame feeling. I just woke up yesterday and I thought they have been winning with kind of magic. At some point in time, that shit, that's just not how you build a football team. Yeah. That stuff runs out. Like winning games with weird fluky shit just doesn't happen week in and week out. It's just not sustainable. I'm going the complete other way. And I went all in the other way. And this game started off 21 nothing. I thought, son of a bitch, I had the oh, winner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had the winner and I gave it away. And then I, it all came back to me. And when I saw them rolling, and they hit 28. I thought, I'm getting this 31 and a half. I need one more touchdown. Memphis's defense is gashed. They can't stop anybody. We are going to roll. And I thought I needed Memphis to score one more time. So UTSA needed to keep scoring. When they kicked that field goal, I thought, that's it. That's it. I'm going to lose this thing by the damn hook. <laughs> Almost had a perfect uh. game. So I've only had one game like that where I just – I, I bet every it was week one. I think it was Fresno against UConn, and it was basically UConn's team total under first half under everything for Fresno over the side. I had like seven bets in one game and just swept them all. Yesterday, I, had, I think I had four bets in this game, and I hit three out of the four. But the it would have been nice to to finally have the, another big one. The UTSA contingency is concerned that they are about to lose Jeff Trailer. Ten wins is entirely well, they, possible for them now this year. They should be concerned. Right? Yes, he is fascinating. At, like He was an Arkansas assistant coach under Chad Morris. It, not who you think would get a job like this, and, and we kind of downplayed the hire. Like We, we did not think well, yeah. highly of this hire initially. Uh, well, I, I don't know about you. I know that I did not. I did not like I, this I put, hire. I put zero thought into it. Yeah, I was I was about as agnostic as somebody could be on it. Well, I remember they they had Frank Harris, who was the uh, recruiting coordinator at LSU, and he kind of stockpiled this team with talent. Now that might be helping out Jeff Trailer quite a bit because he might just be a competent coach with a lot of talent. But he has built this organization in the last two seasons, and they have competed with everybody. Remember, they took BYU last year to a touchdown in Provo. They took Louisiana to a touchdown in their bowl game. Matt Miller said, hey, he recruited all those Arkansas guys. Yeah, he did help. He did help recruit. He helped, but they, um, he's been away from there for uh, Well, two, two years now. So yeah. this is only his second season. But, yes, uh, this is – UTSA, 
they have a a chance to An really interesting team. Yeah, but, well, they're in a prime spot. They're in a big market as a CUSA team. Like they can, they might be a role in, in expansion at this point if they if they continue to be successful. So, but here's the problem: if they lose their coach, then they go back to what they've always been. You are not wrong about that. Uh, although I do think that you can find good coaches in Texas. Like I, I think he's he's super tied in in Texas. I think you would almost have to hire him in Texas or somewhere around there, right? Like it, maybe a Big Twelve school, something like that. You know, if Houston does something with Dana, like would he go to Houston? Uh, possibly. So we we would have to see. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.